Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, hit my red button and bell and subscribe and be notified of all my new video uploads. And if you are interested in channel memberships, click that little join button and it'll take you to a page that explains all about it and shows you the different levels and all the perks that you can get by becoming a channel member. If you end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up share it out with your to your friends or your Facebook groups. So today I'm going to show you how I created this. Come on along. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I am working in this small dilutions journal and I've just gessoed these two pages and I am going to start with a coat of quinacridone magenta acrylic just to get some initial color down and I still have my brush that has the gesso in it I'm just going to wet it and dab it off and just let it mix with the magenta isn't that beautiful I love this color Not looking for super even coverage, just looking for an initial layer of color in my background. So I'm just really stretching it. what I needed. I'm going to dry this and then we're going to play with some acrylic inks. Okay, I decided before I start with the inks, I'm going to add a little bit of this bright aqua green acrylic into the background just because I like it. Just some little whimsy, whimsy patches, whimsy patches, feathery patches, or whimsy if you prefer, just kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to do a little experiment. I am going to put fluid matte medium through this stencil to see if I can create a bit of a resist. I just want to grab a sponge. I'm just going to pick some up on the end of a cosmetic sponge and tap it through. I'm not really even concerned if I get the entire pattern. I just want to see if it'll work. Because if it doesn't, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll just dry and be there. You won't see it. And well, I can see it in the light. So the pattern's there. Just 
trying to look in the light and see where I have it, where I need more. That may just be because that's starting to dry. I'm going to leave that. This was a Crafter's Workshop stencil, and it's called Floral Spectacle. It's Okay, I think it's working. I tested it right there, right here. You can see the pattern, and I'm using a fuchsia, maybe, fuchsia ink, and I'm just going to rub it across the page, and hopefully, where I lay down the pattern, we will see the resist happen, and maybe not. Hmm. All right, let's see what happens if we wipe it. Hmm. All right, I'm going to dry this. Okay, so we got a little bit of patterning in here. The interesting thing is the brush marks from my gesso also created a bit of a resist, so that's interesting. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to drop some alcohol. Um, I'm going to go with more yellow, I think. I'm just going to let it run around a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do this. Bit of an ink blot there. And I'm gonna run down here and pick some of that up out of the middle so I don't end up with it running all the way through my book. Alright. And I just have alcohol in a dropper bottle. And I'm gonna drop some on. Let it do its magic. And let's put some red on here. I have <clears throat> scarlet. drop alcohol right into the drips see what it does actually what I think I want to do should have done this before and spray it with some water and spread it out and then put the alcohol on it just play that's all just play. I'm going to push it right off the page. Just suck some of that up. I'm going to let it 
go that way. And you can get some cool effects when you let it, the colors blend together and drip down through each other. So it's kind of a cool way to just do a background or just create a composition. You can suck some of it up if you want. If you got too big of a puddle somewhere. Okay, I'm going to dry this and then play some more. Okay, I took some of that green that I mixed up with the phthalo turquoise and I'm just going to put that on top. That's the nice thing about the acrylic is that it's permanent so once that bottom layer is dry you can add colors on top of it and not worry about getting mud so I can come in with this green on top of the red and have no problems with making brown now if I did it when it was wet it would be brown but because it was dry I'm just not picking anything up. I'm going to have to try to pull these droppers out of these bottles. I got these Dollar Rowney inks on sale at Michael's. And I have a feeling the blue came with no dropper. And the other droppers are like way up inside the bottles. If I come at an angle with my water bottle, which is almost empty, I can kind of direct the way I want the spray to go or if I go straight down it kind of stays where it is. So at this point I'm just having fun and seeing what happens and I have no composition in mind or any end result in mind. I'm just having fun with it. Because, you know, you got to do something to keep your mind busy when you're staying home all the time. And alcohol just makes, it just pushes the paint away and makes those cool circles. Which is fun. Now I could just keep going and going and going. But I just thought I would come on and share while I played. If you haven't played, you can do this with um, high flow acrylics too. They're basically, they are basically um, acrylic inks. Now if I, I can chase this around a little bit with my heat tool too and kind of direct where I want some of these puddles to move and you can just keep doing that until you don't have enough to move anymore. Once it starts to dry then it'll stop moving and it'll just run right around the spot where that alcohol dropped. The other thing you can do is just come in with your paper towel roll and pick up whatever excess is there. Help it dry off a little bit faster. You don't want so much ink. So now I have an interesting background that I can either totally cover up now that I've done playing with it or I can keep going or I can create something on top of it. It would be a, a good background for just a little intuitive painting.
painting, which I think maybe I'm just going to keep going on this and I will do that. Okay, I decided I'm going to just do some sort of little intuitive piece on top of this background. I'm going to take some black archival ink on this stamp and just make some marks to begin with. Let's see, I already got some ink on there. my fine lighter bottle with just some tight and buff high flow acrylic in it. all dry. I'm going to come back in with the bright aqua green acrylic and just make some finger marks here and there. I'm not even thinking about where I'm going. I'm just going. And that's all I need. So it's all about the layers and the just building up the pattern because it's all going to end up in the background poking through whatever ends up on top of it. You'll see. I'm going to dry this now. Okay, I'm going to put some numbers in the background of this. I don't know which ones will end up staying or going, but I'm just going to do some. kind of the lighter areas so we can see some of them. Okay. Okay. I have these um, stencil and masks. It's a set by Andy Skinner called Vogue. So you get the stencil and the mask. And I am going to just mask her out. I'm using Payne's Gray Liquitex Acrylic. would recommend a stencil adhesive or tape it down with the loop of tape on the back. I'm just holding it, but that doesn't always work the best. And it's messy because <laughs> you get it all over your fingers. Let's see? Okay. So I can still see my background pattern a bit and I could totally block it out with more layers around her but for right now I'm just going to go with this. Because I have an idea.
You can leave little spots or you can fill in with a solid color or leave the background or whatever you want to do. Journal in there. And if you prefer to do this with black, then you won't see the background at all, which can be really dramatic and cool. All right, I'm going to dry this before I start to lift it, and then I can define them some more. I'm going to take a black Posca pen and just define the outlines of the figures a little bit more. And I'll just do that off camera so my head's not in your way. Okay, now I'm going to take the stencil part. I have some Titan Buff on my sponge, and I'm just going to fill in this speech bubble. And then I'll dry that and outline that as well. Okay. And I'm going to take a white Posca pen. Make sure you shake those up really good. And I'm just going to kind of outline this little shape here. This one down here, just put some dots. Just some little graphical elements. And maybe we'll go around this one too. Because why not? You could doodle, you can do whatever you want in the what's left of the background. I'm just going to kind of keep this one sort of simple and keep this video a little bit shorter. I'm almost done. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm calling this one done. I added some journaling in my little spots and a message as to how I feel about social distancing. It's totally important and necessary, I agree, but it's getting old. We need to be able to really be together. So right now we're together apart. So stay in touch with the people you love. Use Skype or FaceTime or whatever you have and stay safe, stay home, because I love you. Until next time, go make some art. Bye.